Let me come back to the interest rate saga because Correct. this is front and center. We've Correct. got this bill that was passed by Parliament, which I'd ask you to talk on. But if I can just go back to uh, what we saw. Obviously, we had this surge in October. Correct. T-bill rates went above 20% to one-year T-bill rate. 24%. 24%. Probably the trade of the year last year, <laughs> I think. Correct. Um, now, and we saw that also in 2011. Now, Correct. My experience when that's happened is that actually the whole market reprices. Correct. There's more. You've got to pay up for deposits. Mm -hmm. it, it, would you say that, you know, and then you get this normalization happening. Would you say right now we're in a process of normalization to lower interest rates? What, how would you describe the interest rate environment that's led to this pressure in Parliament and that's led to this sort of interest rate cap bill? And how are you dealing with it as an organization? Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? And, you know, when I was, okay. I picked up finally, at one point you said that the KBRR is not a good transmission mechanism. Correct. And I thought to myself, really the one-year T-bill should be the transmission mechanism because that's Correct. where Correct. the whole market seems to price off. What's happening? I mean, our, our, for us, we see the KBRR as one step. You know, a reduction of interest rates as a regime in a whole economy in my view, it requires more stakeholders and more engagement. I do not see a magic hand that comes in because the elements that drives interest rates, you know, you're going to look at uh, what is your expenditure plan on your fiscal side, what is your revenue collection that you have, what is your deficit, your current account deficit at the economy level, where is inflation and where is the exchange rate. You're going to look at all those companies. Which sectors, where is the economy performing? Where is the GDP expansion happening? When you look at all those components, then you, you, you put together, it, it's more like a crystal ball. And the curve that brings down the normal rates is not a perfect normal curve. Where the interest rates went up last year uh, in, in you know, October, and we expect that by December and January they've come hard to zero, is a much more elongated normal curve if you think about your standard three deviations on a normal curve. So rates went up to 23, 24% uh, in December. Actually, in November, they were 19%, 19.7 in December. They've come down, and now we are around about 18% as an industry. Before this, the rates were at 15%. That's right. Correct? So, and now banks have also adjusted their rates in the month of August by another 100 basis points. So technically, Alican today, we are at 17%. So the difference between 17 and 15 is, is not, a, it's not the difference between 22 and, and, and 15%. So banks have actually come down 500 basis points in the last eight, nine months. So we believe that there is good reason and opportunity to engage with all the stakeholders, largely the National Treasury, the Central Bank, the banking sector, and, and the National Assembly, to find the solution for how do we deal with the bottlenecks mm. that increase interest rates. And we've addressed these three issues. You know, how do you look at your cost of deposit? And in my view, the KBRL is not the reference. The CBR is not the reference. Your Treasury bill rate, 91 day, mm. is the reference point for the cost of funding for banks. So we need to look at this instrument and see some adjustments we need to be made to the reference rate. This is one aspect in terms yes. of what is the equation. Number two is to look at your non-performing loans in the industry. Today we are quite high at almost 8% at the industry level. So how do we isolate so that good payers don't pay the price for bad payers? Yeah? Because Alcan, if you look at it, there are customers who should be borrowing at 10%, mm. TB plus one, and the customer should be borrowing at 30%, mm. because that is the way the risk profile, all people should be excluded from lending because they're just bad payers. There is no value in a bank giving money to someone where the probability of default is 100%. So tell me what happens in the event that an interest rate cap, because not everybody is at that, is at that ceiling, are they? And if you look, I mean, at some pretty disastrous scenarios where people have tried this, Joshua, you know, look at Venezuela, where you, you ultimately get credit rationing, you get a seizing up of the entire banking system. I mean, I know that's a dystopian future, but isn't it, isn't it something we've got to be careful about? I mean, the consequences are extremely severe. Mm. You know, and when I speak to my customers every day, and you know, today it is, looks like the debate is between uh, the parliament and the financial sector. When you sp but w we have customers that come to the bank every day and say, for me, I know my credit score is not very good. I'm prepared to improve it, but give me some access to credit. So basically, you refinance and restructure a bad customer to make him a good customer. It takes time. And so we, we also have a real engagement with our own clients and the industry. And as KCB, we are very clearly engaged on what customers are looking for. So that segment of high-risk customers would be technically excluded. 
but they need their funding for their businesses, the micro enterprises, the border border individual who is setting up. He has no security. Your check of loans which have unsecured loans, the banks will not be able to lend to that sector. So, and let's also see that their customers today are borrowing at 11%, 12%. You know, what happens to them? Do their pricing get increased to the 14.5%? So I, I see, in my view, that there is great opportunity. The consequences are huge, but we haven't exhausted the opportunities to find a working solution for the interest rates. And we're very open. The KBA has proposed three mechanisms, looking at the treasury bill rate as one of the basis of benchmarking loans in the market, especially for short-term loans. The second item is to look at how do we build a specific SME fund you have to target women, young people, the micro loans in here and price them mm -hmm. at around about 14, 15%. Now, a 30 billion fund, mm -hmm. which is revolving short term loans six months, one year, will, will almost reduce our interest rate overall by another 100 basis points. So that gives you back to 16%. And for me, 16 and 15 is very close. And thirdly, we then look at the profile of a customer risk profile. Yes. And depending on where you are as a customer, you then can go to your bank and say, I want to be a, the best price. So if you look at the credit information that's available from the CRBs, we like to push for one thing we do agree, and I do agree with the bill before, before which has been approved by Parliament, is transparency of pricing by banks. So I am a strong believer that if you walk into the bank and you can see your exchange rate for all the currencies, you should equivalently see the ruling interest rate average for the entire that bank, for that branch. So that customers can walk in from one branch and out. It, it, an interest rate itself, of average for the industry, is not a secret. It's something that we should disclose. It's so the annual percentage rate that KBA has been pushing for is a reality. So I would say it's not the way to go. And, and, and other than burning the house to kill the snake, what we should aim to do is to go in there and identify the mechanisms to address high interest rates. And we should reduce them. It's not the first country to reduce interest rates through a concerted effort. So I am positive. Do you, th do you think the financial sector is going to come up with a response in time? We, yes, we have delivered responses yeah. already uh, to mm -hmm. the National Treasury and the Central Bank. And, those, and they are very strong. It's not that we have not provided responses even to the members of Parliament. We have engaged the Committee of Finance Trade for, minimum, for almost a year mm -hmm. with proposals. We like to see that process carry on. And the solution will still be us engaging further with Parliament through the National Treasury to find a middle ground on this issue. Ali Khan, if, if the bill is passed into law, the consequences for the Kenyan economy will be catastrophic. We are a large payer of taxes. We support funding to huge sectors of the economy today, the agriculture, hospitality, education. If that doesn't exist, SME and micro enterprises, you start then seeing an impact on Kenya's um, gross domestic product, the GDP growth getting impacted. So, so you, 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 you feel confident that the president will, will not sign this bill? I mean, I'm confident that banks have solutions available mm -hmm. which have been proposed and discussed with the National Treasury, and that basis is good to engage in. A, it's not, we haven't reached the time to cap the rates. Mm -hmm. That's for me is a message I would like to send in these kind of conversations with you. Yes. That there are avenues to deal with the pockets of the sector where we don't have the best pricing, deal with the risk profiling for customers and determine their pricing, and be able to cut the rates by 100 basis points because the reference rate has already dropped. Those three are good enough, in my view, Alika, to drop the rates from the current 18 to around about 15. And that is, and, the, and the, the bill proposes 14.5. Now, Alika, 14.5 and 15 are in the neighborhood of the same range. So I am confident that we have proposals that should be listened to, and those proposals should give us the solution we're looking for, for lower interest rates.